that's How's it going, Pat? All right? Evening, done. Terence. Hi, Don. How's it going, all right? House tab. And give us a dry ginger, will you, please, Frank? So, uh, what's new? Ah, same old, same old. Started seeing a nice little WDC from Stafford Row. <laughs> you know, you've been out of the job too long, Terry. It's DC, so they keep reminding me. Yeah, well, she's a bit old-fashioned. Yeah, and none too fussy either, dating some clapped-out private eye, eh? <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad you finally turned up. We're about to start. So who we got? Well, Yorkie's about somewhere, probably in the bog. And Dopey Dave's turned up again. When do you ever learn? <sighs> He'll bring his grandmother with him one day and bet her. Who's the, um... Who's the suit he's talking to? I thought you'd clock him a bit sharpish. Newcomer. Bloke called Fallon. Howard Fallon. The name rings a distant bell. Yeah, it did with me too. He was here for the first time last week, but uh, I can't place him. So what do you know about him? Mm, not much. He's a bit cagey. Friendly enough. A bit of a charmer, even. He's got a minder in tow as well, that's nice. What's his play like? Pretty steady. Nothing special that I've seen. You seem a bit intrigued. <laughs> well, you know me. I like to keep abreast of who's on my patch. Hey, you'll get fat. Hey, what, you? <laughs> What's it to you, anyway? It's just an observation. Sam, look out! <sighs> we nearly had him, then. He's taking a right crack on the head. His breathing's all right, though. I'm just going to lie you down, mate. Sierra Oscar from 518 receiving. Yeah. Yeah, we need an ambulance, Sarge, to the lorry yeah. lay-by just off Alvis Road. We've got a male IC1 unconscious with a head injury. Received. Listen, I'm just going to check to see if anyone's seen anything. Are you going to be all right? Yeah, I'm you? fine. You yeah. go. Yeah. Can you hear me, sir? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Eventually, I'll get a hand I can play. So where are you from, Howard? Not giving much away in that accent of yours. I spend a lot of time on the continent. Germany, Holland. They're very precise with their English. I guess it rubs off. Well, that doesn't exactly answer the query, does it? Essex, originally. And you're telling me, out of all those great places that you visit and work, the best poker game you could find was in Sun Hill? I didn't say I was looking for the biggest game. Just uh, one with the right mix of people. I like to feel at ease. Are we playing or talking? I call for £20. Yeah, cool. I reckon they haven't seen it. Shush him in a towel, he's trying to say something. You all right, mate? What's your name? George, mate. Ain't hard. Well, what happened to you, George? Can you remember? Hit me. Took it. What, can you say that again, George? Sorry, George. You better go on to see ID, Sam. Two pair for Howard. A straight for Dave. Oh, but Terry takes it with a flush. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, well... What about you, Don? You've been pretty quiet these past few hands. Nothing to do with me, I hope. Strange face at the table and all that. Just saving myself, Dave. Or maybe I'm watching your tell. It can't be done. I don't have one. Dealers are good now, Ed. Yeah, I'll go 20. Nah, fold. Cool. Fold. Raise. 50. Cool. Fold. Still saving yourself up, Don. Here's the flop. Ten of spades, eight of spades, six of clubs. Check. Hundred. <sighs> oh. 
All in. Showdown. King of Diamonds and Jack of Hearts. River killer. The man's a demon. <laughs> Would everyone mind dealing me out for five minutes? Why don't we all take five minutes, yeah? Come on, Dave, I'm only drinking. Frank, give us another dry ginger, will you? Thanks. His name's George Maynard, works for DTF Orlidge, local firm. Managed to tell you what happened? Yeah, he reckons he pulled his lorry over in a lay-by for a cuppa. And then he got bothered as soon as he got out, so the cab was warm and not him. So they're either following him or just waiting for anybody who turned up? Yeah, either way, he tied him up, threw him into the bushes. He finally managed to get himself free, but he can't say how soon after. What about the cargo? We got anything on that? Oh, well, he's picked up on the continent, heading for the Midlands, and he had about 360 grand's worth of mobile phones on him. Well, if it was just an opportunist, it certainly picked the right lorry, didn't he? Come on, let's go and see where he went down. All right. I'll go 50. Cool. Two hundred. Cool, two hundred. I know what it feels like to be a spare wheel. I fold. Four hundred. Six hundred. Dealer checks. River card for free. Six of clubs. Hmm. Possible flush. If you got those clubs, of course. Thousand pounds. You're trying to buy it. What about that other ground you got there? Hmm? Raise. Let's see it. Cool. Queen high flush. Now let's see an ace or a king. I can't do it. It's yours. <laughs> Looks like the drinks are on you, Don. <laughs> have to be some other time, I'm afraid. I've got to, to follow up on some urgent business. Thank you for the game. My pleasure. How are you going to follow a hand like that, Don? I'm not, Terry. I have a policy. I don't chase my luck. I'm going home with a bottle of single malt. Sorry, mate, I can't have this. You what? It's a dud. Silver strips just been printed on the surface. Look at that. 
Pro spotter glove. Trading standards. Just test it. What did you do? Blimey, Don. The sun's barely up. You practicing for a move back to uniform? <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs> yeah. Just a touch of the old insomnia, that's all. Funny. I'd have thought you slept like a baby. Right, what can I do for you? I just wondered if uh, anything had come in overnight to do with counterfeiting, shopkeepers complaining, anything like that. No, I've had a look, nothing like that. Why? Well, a snout of mine has just given me a name of someone pushing snide 20s around the late night shops. That's all. Uh, reckon you could do me a PNC check, please? Sure. Right, far away. Name's Fallon. Howard Fallon. I see one. 35-ish, about six foot one. All right. Let's see what we've got. Huh. Uh, shoplifting, handling, assault on a police officer, illegal possession of a firearm. Mind you, these are all prior to 1992, so either he's gone straight or... Or he's got a hell of a lot smarter, yeah. Thanks, June. So, OCG don't want it. What have we got? Well, the driver's been in since he was overnight, but he is fit to make a statement. Gary and Reg found the lorry about half an hour ago empty, of course. We were just going to take a look at it on the way over to St Hughes. Reg reckons there's some decent tyre tracks on a second vehicle. So, they've emptied one vehicle, filled up another. Anything else? Witnesses? Not at the moment, but once we've talked to the lorry driver, then we'll uh, chase some snouts. Right. I'm you sorry, not sir, but I have me. been instructed he will by see Mr me. not to... Just get in there and tell him, don't be... Tom. What a surprise. Come on in. Yep. Thank you. Have a seat, Don. I'm uh, curious as to how you managed to find me so quickly. Oh, I have my ways. Of course you do. Detective Sergeant. So, what can I help you with? Okay. I'm assuming you're just here to talk. If you'd come to arrest me, you'd have announced yourself as a copper to my secretary. Maybe, maybe not. You're in a tricky position, Don. After all, you were taking part in a legal poker game last night. <laughs> Look, if you think I'd let something like that stop me nicking you, you lost it big time. Perhaps. I just don't think you will. Well, while you're thinking that, you can tell me what the hell you think you were playing at. I just wanted to talk to you about a few things. In private. Do you always go about things the hard way? Why didn't you just ask? Let's just say I was testing the water first. Find out what kind of reaction I'd get. Oh, so all that stuff last night was just a big act, right? Well, I knew where you played poker. And I know how to throw away an ace high flush when I need to. As for the money, I'll uh, replace it with genuine notes, obviously. Now you're insulting me, Fallon. Listen, I don't know what it is you think you've heard about me, but I don't like strangers poking into my private affairs. And I certainly don't like people who play pathetic little games trying to get one over on me, all right? Hang on, Don. Listen, I'm a very busy man, Fallon. And for that reason alone, I'm going to put this down to a silly practical joke and leave it at that. See ya. Don, wait. Wait! I'm sorry, all right? Look, at least let me apologise properly. It was a stupid, clumsy approach to someone like yourself. I see that now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Look, I know you're being cautious, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But I need some expert advice. Please. All right. I'm not one to penalise someone if they're saying they're sorry. Coffee. Uh, no, not for me, thanks. And I haven't got all day, so can we cut straight to the bottom line, yeah? OK. I recently bought a firm in Sun Hill, DTF Haulage, and, uh, naturally, I've been looking to form ties with the local community. Influential people such as yourself are going to help smooth out any difficulties. So what makes you think I could be of any help? I do my research. I know you've done favours for other people. I also know you've got a keen eye for a good investment. That's a property of yours in Spain, for example. Maybe you've been misinformed, Howard. I don't think so. Whatever. So what is this advice you think you need? One of my lorries was hijacked last night, carrying a shipment of mobile phones. And, uh, unfortunately, the police got onto it almost immediately. But why unfortunately? Because in amongst the phones is 50 grand's worth of contraband cigarettes. 
Ah. Uh, it's not really a police matter after all, is it? But I don't want some overzealous copper putting customs on my back. So what you're looking for is a friendly face to get to the shipment first, yeah? Just someone who can let me know where the goods are and then leave the rest to me. Right. Just like that. That shouldn't be too hard for a man with your resources and reputation. And I'd be extremely grateful. Let me give you my mobile phone number and then uh, you can think about it. Hold on a minute. Let's stop playing games, Don. You must have already checked my record. So if you're worried that this might be another setup, CIB or whatever, forget it. They'd never be hooked up with me. Oh, yeah. Look, you're a policeman. I've reported a crime. What's the problem? How many people know about these dodgy shipments of yours? Only the people that need to know. A handful. Have you got any enemies? Lots. All right. I'll think about it. But I'm promising nothing. Fair enough. And as for that ace-high flush you reckon you threw away last night, let you and me have a rematch one day, yeah? No tricks. And I'll still beat you. You're on. been up and about before the rest of us this morning. Know something we don't? Early birds, worms. Need I say any more? Mm. Tea, please. Well, I hear there was a an excitement here last night. Something to do with a lorry hijacking. That's right. Jeff's handling it with Mickey. Ah. Ah, what? Well, if the governor will insist on giving Jeff Daly the big boy stuff. Mm. All right. <coughs> All right. Morning, Jeffrey. Morning, Mickey. So? I hear you two have copped that hijack. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, a bit meaty on a string of poxy burglars, isn't it? How are you doing so far? I spoke to Drive in hospital. No luck so far. I've handled a couple of hijacks in the past. I thought I might be able to help you. Oh, I think we can manage Donald. Thank you. When you ready, Mickey? Yeah, see you, Mick. You see what I mean, Claire? I tried to be nice to the dope and, well, he just won't have it. If only he was a little bit more like John Bolton, we'd have a nice, cosy little team here between us, wouldn't we? Hmm? George Maynard. Yeah? DS Beach, Sun Hill. Oh, I've already had the police round once this morning. DS, what's his name? Daily, yes, I know, George. But this is just a follow-up, you see. Um... Letting you home, I see. Yeah, just concussion, they said. A lucky man. Did you get to see the people who did this to you? Look, I've already been through all this once. Yeah, yeah, I know, George, but that's the whole point of a follow-up, you see. You'd be absolutely amazed at how much extra detail people remember on the second interview. Well, like I said to the others, I didn't see anybody. They hammered me from behind as I was climbing out of the cab. Next thing, I was in the bushes and the lorry had gone. Did you notice anyone following you any time before you pulled in? No, nothing. Anybody else around just before it happened? I mean, witnesses? Nobody, no. How long have you been with DTF? Five, six years. Why? Enjoy it? To live in. What about friends, uh, family, acquaintances? Uh, any of them know that you use this transport stop regularly? They don't use it regularly. Look, if you're trying to say that I told somebody about that phone shipment, you're out of order. I've never been in trouble in my life. George, you're not giving us much to go on, you know. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Make something up? All right, OK. But if you do remember anything... Look, my mobile number's on the back there. Try and use it, yeah? And I'll uh, catch you later. All right, Tom. Thanks for meeting me. I need to pick your brains again. 
Don't tell me. Still curious about Howard Fallon, right? Well, that's one topic, yeah. As a matter of fact, I was picking somebody's brains about him myself just this morning. It's my patch too, Don. Not the only one that likes to keep up with current events. Hold on a minute. Problem? Nah. So, have you got anything new? Uh, not a great deal. Just gossip. But enough to know that Howard Fallon is not somebody to be messed about with. Apparently he's into all sorts. All inch manufacturing, import, export, both nationwide and abroad. Are these firms legit? Not on the surface at least. But I'm told that he's a very, very well connected bloke, if you get my drift. Look, changing the subject, I need a few possibles on a lorry hijack urgently. Anything? Pat Tandy. Always a good place to start. What about that Jackson gang from a few years back? Tom Jackson? Last I heard they broke up years ago. Turned to other things. Yeah, that's what I thought. Alright, Mickey. Sarge? Working hard, I see. Yeah. How's it going? Alright. It's alright, Mickey. I won't put you on the spot. I only mention it because a contact of mine gave me a name this morning. Tom Jackson. Not been active for a while. But word is that he's back. Now, it's entirely up to you whether you follow it up, but it could be solid gold, Mick, all right? Oh, and uh, if I were you, I wouldn't let Daly know that it was me that gave it to you. He'd ignore it just on principle. Well, keep on it, will you? I need this today before they unload the gear. As if they already am done. OK, bye. You've been in and out a lot today, Don. A lot going on, Claire. Got some good leads on my burglary. Jeff. Yeah? Ah, sounds excellent. No, no, save it. Uh, we'll see you, say, 20 minutes. Usual place, OK? Right, bye. Mickey, we're on our way out. I'll see you in the car park. Do you want this? I'm going to get something from the canteen. Been having too much caffeine lately. Cheers, Don. I know you. Yeah. You should stay off the skeg. I nicked you a couple of years ago. DS Beach, remember? Yeah. Get in the car. What you doing here? Yeah, that's what I need to talk to you about. I couldn't help noticing your little tater tate with Jeff Daly down there. What's going on? I suppose we're a secret. Yeah, well, secrets don't always remain secret, do they, Tipsy? Eh? Which brings me neatly to my point. What? <sighs> Daly is working this case, see. The problem is, one of my informants is caught up in the gang that he's targeting. Now, you more than anybody would understand why I need to protect him. Yeah. Well, what do you want from me? I need to know exactly what you've just told Jeff Daly. What? I need advance warning on any police action so I can get my man out of harm's way. I don't want the gang thinking that it's him that tips off the police. I, I don't know. This, this ain't regular, like. No, I know it's not, Tibsy. But you know what happens when informants get found out, don't you? I mean, people like me hold the lives of people like you in the palms of their hand. 
but there's always an upside to any arrangement. So if you tell me exactly how much it's going to cost to make this regular, as you put it, Yeah, well, you are another copper, you know. See, there's this, there's this fence called Desmond Silver. I heard he was expecting a shipment of mobile phones, ninety grand's worth going right. Yeah, I know this silver. Well, well, I saw him and his supplier down the town starving. It was three lunchtime. Grey air, about fortieth northern. I, I don't know his name or anything, but. But I do know the swap's supposed to happen sometime late afternoon, early evening. There you go. You're a lifesaver, TV. Now, listen, we can keep this just between ourselves, if you like. I mean, I can keep a secret, if you can. Yeah. Yeah, great, man. Nice doing business with you. Don! Just in time for lunch. <laughs> I thought lunch was for wimps. Touche. Well, you've obviously got the bit between your teeth. That, uh, that mate of yours come up with something useful, did he? Terry Parsons? Ah, so that was one of your firm following me earlier. Following? No. Nothing so crude. Just as well. I'd hate to get anyone into any trouble showing out and getting dumped. Right, shall we get down to business? I've got to work fast. Go on. The copper that's investigating the hijacks just had a lucky break. DS Daily. I reckon just about now he'll be setting up an obo on the fence that's looking to buy your phones. But you've got something else on the go. Well, the swap was set up well ahead of time, which means they had advanced intelligence on your shipment. Inside job. Get in here, will you, Ray? Look, I can't go poking around your haulage company looking at employees, so I'm going to need a shortcut. Don, this is uh, Ray Bazzini, my right-hand man. Ray Dombeach. I'm looking for a northerner, 40-ish, uh, prematurely grey. Probably with good access to the shipping manifests. Get onto DTF, will you, Ray? What if you're on the wrong track? Then Daly Zobo will probably net him the shipment first and you'll have a bit of explaining to do. What about this surveillance operation of Daly's? Couldn't you, uh, I don't know, Infiltrate it or something? Intercept the shipment before it gets to the exchange point. <laughs> now you're talking silly, Howard. Remember, I'm not part of your firm, so I'll only go out on a limb so far. We're clear on that. Right, this is some... Um... Grey out bloke. Could be one of the line managers we transferred down from Leeds after the takeover. We dumped him about a month ago. Had his hand in the till. What do you know about the extra cargoes? Possible. Name's Grant. Bob Grant. Right. I'm going to need all his employment records, phone number, address, everything you've got, yesterday. No problem. But if it is this guy, he's not going to have his feet up at the same address, is he? You just let me worry about that here, Howard. Yeah. Hello? All right, Jeff. Yeah, I hope you can, love. No, no, he's waiting. He's right. I uh, wanted to check on someone who had a mobile phone account with you recently. In the name of Grant. Robert. Yeah, his number seems to be disconnected. Hang on, hang on. Zero eight zero two four two zero zero one three. Thank you very much. Okay, so he changed his number. Did he give you a change of address as well? No, that's his old one. Never mind. Thanks a lot, love. Bye. Okay, Danny, we're on. Don't tell me I'm missing all the fun again. Backing up Jeff Sobo. Yeah, well, something going down imminently. Well, he reckons it won't be long now. Why? Just thought you might need some extra bodies, that's all. Well, we've got uniform backed up <clears throat> if we need them. Hello? Bob Grant? Never mind who this is, just listen. If you're doing what I think you're doing, Bob, you're on your way to meet Des Silver. Look, I said listen, so listen. Silver sold you out, mate. 
Yeah, the old Bill's going to be waiting for you. Look, if you want to play dumb, go ahead and keep your date. But if you want to unload those phones and you want to stay out of the nick, meet me up at Canley Fields by the pilot at half past seven. Look, I've done you a really big favour here, pal, so be there, right? Oh, Grant. Yeah, we spoke earlier. You coming or what? Right, well, if you are watching me, you can see I'm totally alone, can't you? Look, if you're not happy, you tell me exactly what you want. All right, good. I had a careful sniff around Silver's meeting place. You were right. Crawling with filth. Like I said, I saved your bacon, Robert. OK. So what else have you got to tell me? Well, I work with the guy whose phone shipment you nicked last night. Fallon. So you know exactly who it was you ripped off? I do, as a matter of fact. But I don't intend sticking around. I've got retirement plans. But all Fallon wants is his goods back. The whole shipment intact. I bet he does. What do I get in return? He'll forget the whole thing. Block the police inquiry best he can. After all, if I found you, so can old Bill. And maybe Fallon even throw in a finder's fee, if you're lucky. How much? I suppose whatever you'd have got from Silver. 90 grand for the phones and something to cover the cigarettes. <laughs> oh, that's priceless, that is. That's a gem. What do you want about? Now, you listen. You're going to go back to Fallon and tell him the price is 600 grand or the goods go elsewhere. In your dreams. 100 for the phone, seen as it's him, and half a mil for the 42 kilos of smack that's hidden in the shipment. You what? Oh, did he not tell you about his special little sideline? <laughs> you thought this was all about what? Some dodgy cigarettes? And you knew all along what was in the shipment? You really think I'd risk getting in Fallon's bad books for a load of poxy phones? 600 grand by this time tomorrow and no tricks. I'm holding you personally responsible for my security. Well, you know where you can stick that, don't you? Careful. See, you've been recognised, pal. A local copper doing Howard Fallon's dirty work. So unless you're a good boy and do exactly what I've told you, I'll have to ring Sunhill Nick, won't I? And blow you sky high to your mates. DHM. Should be a red Toyota. It's registered to Canley Car Hire. Magic. Thanks, June. Back to square one, then. Right. Top priority is to find the grey-haired supplier. So first stop, DTF Haulage. Somebody there will recognise from his description whether he's an employee or an ex-employee. More if that's a dead end. Then we go back to the list of likely suspects that you dragged out yesterday. Go back in silver or not? Oh, what for? Illegal parking? Waiting for a supplier who never showed? That's going to crack him open straight away, isn't it? Morning, all. Oh, uh, bad news about that old of yours. Ah, oh, you heard about that, did you, Don? Yeah. Hard luck. But, um, happens to all of us sometime. Happens a bit too often round here. Excuse me? Forget it. <laughs> no, no, no. I know that nasty tone in your voice. You got something on your mind. Why don't you spit it out? All right. I'm just slightly curious as to why you were so interested in my case yesterday. It's funny that, isn't it? What exactly do you mean? The sly questions. The casual offer of help in the canteen. And the sneaky little tip-off to Webbo behind my back. 
Since when did you start helping me, eh? Well, pardon me for breathing. There was nothing sneaky about it. I heard something on the grapevine, I passed it straight to Mickey, because I knew you'd be pig ignorant and throw it straight in the bin. Oh, really? Yeah. But that's not what this is all about, is it, Jeff? Hmm? That evil little mind of yours is cooking up some conspiracy theory to excuse away your blown obo, isn't it? With me in the middle. I never said that, Don. No, you didn't have to. But if you ever do work up the bottle to do anything about it, why don't you take it straight into the governor and see what he thinks? Well, maybe I will. Yeah, well, I'll see you in there then. See if you can back up that big gob of yours with some evidence. But until then, I've got work to do. You are losing it big time. Hello, Mr. Fallon. It's Don Beach. Just thought I'd keep you up to date. No, nothing since I saw you yesterday. No grant, no anything. Why would I keep anything from you, eh? As soon as I locate him, I'll let you know. Yeah. As soon as there's a break, you'll know about it. Hi, oh, remember me? Yeah, the hospital, yeah. Just another routine follow-up, George. That's all. Not back at work yet, yeah, I see. No, a couple of days, the doctor said. So, what can I help you with? Well, I'm going to cut straight to the chase, George. I think you were chauffeuring Bob Grant around last night up Canley Fields. Don't know what you're on about. Who's, who's Bob Grant? Just one of the line managers at your firm up until about a month ago. Ring any bells? He's been using a hire car for the past few days, George, and guess who was with him when he picked it up? Only someone who matches your description. Not me. And it was you who told him I was old Bill, right? You're out of order. I don't know what you're talking about. Save it, George. You made it look pretty good with that knock on your head. But you're in it with Grant. So talk to me. You can't prove nothing. And I'm not saying nothing either. Oh, yes, you will, George. Because I've got more tricks up my sleeve than a wagon load of monkeys. And I can think up a dozen different ways of having you thrown in the slammer if I put my mind to it. You still not going to play? All right. Cup hold of this. I worked out what was wrong with the whole Grant Silver setup, And I think you're being double-crossed. Because unless you're exceptionally greedy, George, why take the risk of flogging a huge bulk shipment of phones when the real prize is a nice, neat half a million in smack? You what? It got me the same way, George. The drugs were in your cargo. He didn't want you to know anything about it. Wake up, George. You have been used. Bob told me you got you sorted. You're making it up just to trick me. He was going to pay you, all right. But with half the proceeds from the mobile phones, the rest of the drug money he was going to keep all to himself. No, I don't believe you. Oh, come on, George. Let's face it. You're just a middle-aged lorry driver. Do you actually believe that he'd think twice about having you over or throwing you to the dogs if it got a bit sticky? What do you mean? Well, the police are not the only people you've got to worry about, George. The owners of those drugs are going to want to feed you into the mincer, one finger at a time. You know that. Now, wait a minute. I didn't know nothing about it. It weren't my idea. Look, do you actually think they're going to give a toss, George? Do you? We're talking about half a million quid. You know, villain George, you're just someone who's trying to get ahead in life before it's too late. Yeah, that's what it was. I didn't start it. Grant came to me. But you couldn't take this kind of heavy action. You get crushed, trampled on. Unless, of course, she's like me to make it all go away for you. What do you want? First, you're going to show me where you stash the phones. Then you're going to take me to where Grant's hold up, OK? Grant? No, look, I don't like making arrangements over a mobile. Look, just meet me for ten minutes. We can get it sorted for tonight. 
Yeah, all right, OK. Yeah. He went for it. He should be down in a second. What about me? Well, if this pans out, you get your life back again, George. You're an honest man, and I'm after bigger fish. There he comes. He's keener than I thought. Sorry, George. Just a precaution. Till I get back, OK? How are you going to get into Grant's room? With my charm, of course. Right, thanks. Um, I'll let you know when I finish, all right? Gov, it's Don. Yeah, um, look, uh, one of my snouts has come up trumps on Jeff Daly's hijack. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. 100%, I'll vouch for him. Nice. Think you'll find this a few missing gov? I can live with that. One in the eye for OCG, eh, Jeff? Yeah. You're late. You better not mess me around at the swap tonight, mate. There's not going to be any swap, Bob. Oh, is that a fact? This I've got to hear before I sell you down the river. You got no bargaining chips anymore. And how's that? Because I reckon just about now, Sunhill CID will be unloading those phones from your lorry. I don't believe you. Well, a lock up under the arches? Not very original, is it? And as for your smack, well, keeping it under your nose is not always the safest place, Bob. It's too late, mate. It's not there anymore. What have you done with it? Are you keeping it for yourself, you hey, little. Hey, 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 hey. Now you've got one very naughty mind. I want it back. I can still put you away, you know. What, your word against mine? You can't even prove there were any drugs. And if I were you, I'd hope it stays that way, mate. Because I'm willing to bet any sort of money that the only prints on them are going to be yours. Fallon's going to come looking for you, Bob. If I were you, I'd head for that retirement. Pity about your pension, though. <laughs> Mickey, did you get all the gear? Yeah, but all but a few boxes, Sergeant. Yeah, I'm glad it found out for you, mate. Don, your snout excelled himself. Nice one. Yeah, I just wish you could do the same for my burglaries, girl. It's funny how he gave us the gear, but he couldn't give us any names, isn't it, Don? Hey, come on, Jeff. What is it with you? You want gravy on everything, do you? All I know is what I told the governor. My snout reckons that they were frightened off by another local firm that didn't like them working on their manor, that's all. Maybe that's where that Jackson gang come in, Sarge. Don't know, Mickey. It was your case. I was just helping out. 
Oh, by the way, Jeff, wasn't there a bit of um, unfinished business you wanted to sort out with the governor? No, it can wait, Don. Right. OK, everyone. Teaser on me. I'll take you up on that, Don. And talk to those burglaries. You can bring me up to speed. Yes, go. Good choice on your part, Don. Although I would say that. I've got a 20% stake in this chain. Well, you are full of surprises, aren't you? I was uh, rather hoping you had a surprise for me. I take it that's the point of this meeting. You know, Howard, one of these days you're going to be far too confident for your own good. Give me one good reason I shouldn't bust you the next week for that shipment. So you did find it, then. One good reason. You like the game too much, Don. And the payoff at the end. Am I wrong? Swimming pool locker room. Cali Sports Centre. Now that's what I call a straight flush. Well played. Can I get an orange juice, please? So, what will it cost me? Well, I prefer it to leave it, but you earn me one this time. But if there's ever going to be a next time out, you better be as straight as an arrow. And the rewards better be twice as good. Well, you get what you pay for. It's a deal. So the only matter outstanding is that £2,000. All right. Double or quits. One turn of the car. Six of spades. It's that bad luck lady again. I wouldn't call four grand bad luck. Just as well I came prepared. Here you go, Don. Hopefully the first of many. I take it that shuffle of yours was kosher. How could it be anything else? What do you think I am, Don? A magician? Cheers. Cheers. Early this morning, somebody followed into a park and rearranged her features. She's on the game. Oh, what? Because she's wearing a short skirt. How long have you just barge in here? Already have, haven't I? Just wanted to let you know how I feel. I can't handle it, I'm sorry. It's so stupid of me. Listen, you. Nobody has my number without my say-so, got it? You don't have many interests, do you, Warren? Now you're asking for an extremely specialised service there, Howard. One that would incur a bonus. I'm innocent! I'm innocent! <laughs>